But it's not just the weather that could prove disastrous for the Guggenheim. Being largely constructed of meltable steel, a fire would be catastrophic if it ever took hold. To solve this problem, the architects looked at the fieriest place on the surface of the Earth. A volcano. Fire always poses the biggest threat in public buildings, and obviously the public safety is paramount. But in an art gallery like this one, well, there are irreplaceable objects everywhere. The art. And you really should try and save that. The gallery has traditional sprinkler systems placed throughout, but they're only designed to cope with small, isolated fires. But what if a fire took hold? Obviously, the people will have been evacuated, and hopefully most of the artworks, but the heat of a raging fire can be devastating to a building, because once steel reaches over 600 degrees, it loses half its load carrying capacity. So the engineers needed something that would stop the Guggenheim collapsing. To find out okay. what they came up with means going somewhere most people never get to see, inside the museum's walls. Thank you. And now let me guess. Up the big ladder. And then I'm guessing it gets worse. I just know it will. OK. Up the big ladder. It is remarkable how many fascinating engineering connections are also very high up. Really big ladder. Nobody ever does any fascinating engineering near the ground. It's always got to be high. Fires in buildings can rage at over 1,000 degrees C and last for hours. Engineers needed a way of protecting the steel skeleton from the intense heat so the Guggenheim doesn't collapse, destroying millions of pounds worth of art. For the solution, the engineers turned to nature and used a naturally occurring fire retardant substance that could withstand temperatures of over 1,000 degrees. And it's this, mineral wool. It's made from volcanic rock and mixed with concrete, it sticks very nicely to the steel structure of the building, which should protect it from the heat, stop it from melting, and the building from collapsing. This connection takes us back to 19th century Hawaii, where scientists studying the volcano Kilauea found strange threads of glass scattered around. During violent eruptions, lava is spun into glass fibers like candy floss. The tresses are called Pele's hair, after the volcano goddess who Hawaiians traditionally believe lives inside Kilauea. Combining these fibers created a fantastic insulator, mineral wool. It should protect the steel skeleton of the Guggenheim for up to four hours, hopefully enough time to quash the blaze. To see if it's up to the job, I've built a wall out of steel panels. They're protected with mineral wool on one side. At the Guggenheim, they sprayed it onto the steel girders, but I'm using easy-to-handle sheets, and in front of those is fire. So this is a proximity suit? Yes. That sounds quite space age. I like the sound of that. It's aluminium eyes to reflect the heat away from you. Perhaps in the same way that you'd wrap at the top of your chicken in aluminium foil in the oven to stop it burning. I'm oven ready, is that what you're saying? Basically. I like it, but it's a bit 70s disco. Apparently, I'm the only one that needs a disco suit because they aren't going that close. I'm guessing right now it's something out of Doctor Who, circa 1960. Very nice. This is tremendous. Right, the idea of this is I'm going to be experimenting with fire, okay. taking temperatures and things. You guys are looking after me. How will I know if it's not working, the suit? As soon as you start to feel mildly uncomfortable, then it's time just to walk away. Um, walk? So just, yeah. Not um, Just, um, no. Just... Okay. Right, well, um, I've got one piece of kit here. Right, there's work to be done. Over there. I almost wish I hadn't added this little baby into the mix now. It's a propane-powered flamethrower, and it burns at well over 1,000 degrees C, hot enough for steel to fail structurally and me to roast. Let's hope the suit works better than it looks. Right. Well, I have my two safety fire officers, and I have a thermocouple thermometer here. 
so I can actually get a good idea of how hot it is in this incredibly hot flame. The thermal imaging camera shows me where the hottest part of the flame is, so I can get right in there with my probe. Right now it's 17.5 degrees. As I get closer, leading in with this probe, 35, 44, ooh, all of a sudden, 121 degrees, that's 198, 320, 407 degrees, 582, 600, that's the temperature which already still will have lost half of its load carrying capacity, 989, that's 1000, it's 1100, well that's both too much for the probe and for me, so let's retreat. The hottest part of the wall is over 1100 degrees C. That's around the temperature building fires burn at and well over the temperature at which steel begins to fail. Now I'm going to see what it's like behind the protective layer of mineral wool. OK, well, science and other people's experience tells me I should now be fine to go on the other side of the huge roaring flame without my special suit. So let's have a look and see how it's doing its job. I notice you two are still wearing your special suits. Good, good. Now, this is telling me the temperature here, 29 degrees. Don't forget, just the other side of that wall is that fire that was raging at, well, over 1,100 degrees. 28 degrees is a sort of ambient temperature. It's actually getting cooler as I get closer because I'm shielded by it. 27 degrees. So, technically, that means I could touch it. Can I touch it? I wish they'd said no. OK. Yeah. Absolutely fine. So we know it works. The question now is how? Now, Nick Ralph knows all about mineral wool. OK, so I've now experienced very much firsthand it at work. Clearly, it does work. How? Well, we're all familiar with insulation in the form of a woolly jumper. The principle is that there are small pockets of air trapped within the material, which prevents the heat travelling from one side to the other. The air will stay trapped as long as the fibres don't melt, which they won't do because they've already survived much, much hotter temperatures inside the volcano. They can easily withstand the temperatures of building fires. So this basically is about the gaps in between these fibres and they're stopping it conducting the heat through. And it's as simple as that? It is as simple as that. Obviously, the difference here is that normally when we wear a woolly jumper or we insulate our homes, we're trying to keep the heat in. And in this instance, what we're trying to do is keep the fire out. Well, clearly, it does work because I stood, well, that far from 1,100 degrees C and wasn't in any way influenced by it. So the art at the Guggenheim is safe. Thanks to a volcano and some goddess hair, the Guggenheim and its priceless art is protected from fiery destruction. So, if it wasn't for some pretty clever engineering, the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao wouldn't be the world-class, iconic gallery it is. And the clever engineering is all because of an egg, a trundle wheel, a Soviet submarine, Sir Walter Raleigh, and an Hawaiian volcano. All you need are the right connections. <laughs>